the head Falcon of Central High School. Good morning, Coach. Hey, good morning. Good morning to all you all fans out there. You know, time flies. This is already, I think, going to be your seventh season as the Central head coach. Am I right? Yes, you're, you're, you're correct. Holy cow. Seems like just yesterday you had come back to Central and, and uh, as an assistant, and now here you are going into your seventh year as, as the head coach. I know you got a lot of optimism because last year – you had a you had a pretty good football team there in Class Five A, uh, Region Four last year. I, are you is are you in Region Three this year? No, uh, I'm in the same region. Okay, still in Region Four. Okay, didn't know yeah, if they yeah they changed it up so much. Just wanted to make sure. But last year, Five A Region Four, five and five, uh, a a good football team. That was a tough region. You finished it out with a big win over Parker. What about this team? Uh, what do you got coming back? Can you build on that? Can you get back in the state playoffs? Yes, uh, I, I truly feel we, feel we can because uh, our strong point is our offensive line. And uh, those guys, uh, and especially our center, his name is uh, Tory Brown, been one of the best uh, leaders that, that we have had around here in a long time. Uh, you know, when we need a message to get out to the kids, you know, we call on him. And with that senior leadership, I, I think it's going to pay dividends for us this year. You know, I mentioned 5-5 five and five last year, Coach, but, man, you were close. I mean, you had some heartbreaking losses. 13-12 to 12 to Bryant, 15-14 to 14 to Dallas County, 20-18 to 18 to Helena. Uh, just one or two of those games go in the other direction, and you're in the state playoffs. Correct. And, and uh, you know, we, we, we've been working on that problem, uh, and we're, we're in the we were in the process of uh, continuing to work on that problem, and that was uh, kicking, uh, you know, trying to make some more field goals. And, and also, uh, we're in the process of getting a field goal put on our practice field. When they redone the fields, they didn't put a field goal on the practice field, and I think that has really hurt us over the years. So this year, within the next week or so, it will be a field goal on my practice field. <laughs> I bet that is an issue. So, got to make those extra points. You got to make those field goals. I know in the past, you've heck, you've gone for two a lot because you were worried about getting those extra points in. Right, exactly. And that's because, uh, you know, when we leave the practice field to transition to the uh, game field, you know, it takes us about 15 to 20 minutes to get the kid reorganized and all that. So, by, by this weekend, it's going to be a goal post on, on, on my practice field. And that's going to help us out a whole lot. Let's talk about today. I know it's an exciting time for a high school coach. Of course, for the coaching staff, it's not like you just throw the balls out there. You've been planning for this for a long time. But I mentioned strict guidelines from the AHSAA. You go out at 345 today. How does it uh, evolve? What are you looking in these first couple of days when there's no contact and no pads to get out of the team? What exactly can you do the first few days where there's no pads involved? You know, uh, uh, a lot of agilities, uh, a lot of just uh, teaching, uh, also continue to work on what, what, what we've been working on all summer because we, we really had a long summer. I think we put in about 10, week, 10 weeks this summer. So this, this is our first time that we have all our special teams and all our special teams in and backups. This, this is my first time going into the August practice that all of that is in because simply because all of the kids came to the summer workouts this summer. What's the first day of pads, Coach? Uh, uh, for the next three days, we're going to have to go shorts and, shorts, and, uh, shorts and helmets. And then on Thursday, we can put on the shoulder pads. And then on Friday, we can go full, uh, full, full gear. But in the midst of that, contact is, contact is real limited now. You know, you can probably you can only contact thirty minutes per practice. Yeah, and that is in design with safety in mind. So good, you point that out. First three days, no pads. Thursday, shoulder right. pads. Friday, full pads, but only thirty minutes of full contact per practice uh, in full pads on those practice Correct. days that you're in full pads, and that is closely monitored by AH, AHSAA. Hey, let's talk yes. about uh, when you played at Central. Uh, everybody knows the, the history of Central High School. I mean, two state championships uh, it was a was a power for a long time. One of the top programs in the state. Of course, a lot of that changed when Central was split. Two more high schools, Bryant and Northridge, were were added. Uh, you're in a tough region. More on that in a moment. But I know you have a dream. You have a vision, and that is to make Central a state power once again. 
Uh, how close are you to doing that? Is that is that a goal that you think you can still accomplish to make Central among the elite in Class 5A in the state? Oh, yes. Uh, and then, you know, the best thing about it, I have two of the uh, state championship guys that played on the 07 championship who's now on my staff uh, with um, – with Corey Walden, who now is my offensive coordinator, and Demario Pippen is uh, our running back coach. Uh, both of those guys uh, played on the 07 championship team, and they bring a whole lot to the table. They can relate a whole lot better, you know, with the, with the younger guys that we have. And, and I definitely, and, and I definitely let those guys uh, take the ring on, on, on a lot of a lot of issues that dealing with the kids now. And that is cool because. You have to, as a head coach, be able to delegate. I know you pretty well. I know you're a guy that gets in there in the middle of it, and you're a hands-on guy. But I guess part of becoming a, a, a successful head coach is understanding that you can't do it all yourself, and you've got to trust your staff. Am I correct in that? Oh, you, you're definitely correct about that. And, and, and uh, you know, you know, along with the whole staff, man, we, uh, we really worked real hard this summer, and we really got a whole lot out of the kids. And, you know, we sat down and we talked about it, and we chose not to try to squeeze some tour days in there because of, you know, some IKEA transportation issue. Once we get them up here, we're just going to let them stay. We just have one practice because we feel that, you know, they had, they had a great summer. Let's take a look at, at the region. And if you, uh, if you come out of this region and get into the state playoffs, you're going you're gonna to earn it. I mean, when you're looking at teams like Demopolis, Mm-hmm. Jemison, Calera, uh, Dallas County. I mean, this is a it goes on and on. This is a really right. tough football region that you're in. It is, uh, and 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 they play a lot of smash mouth smash mouth football. And then, you know, with with Calera, who now has a new coach, which is uh, in, Andrew uh, Andre Zal. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he, he's doing great things down there. You know, we bumped into each other this over the summer. And he, uh, he's in the process of doing a great job with those kids down there. And schedule-wise, I, I tell you, Coach, I know you want to keep these rivalries in place, but i got to ask you, you're a glutton for punishment. You're taking on Bessemer City. You're playing Jackson Olin. You're playing Paul Bryant. You're playing Northbridge. I mean, you're in 5A, but you don't mind going up and playing those bigger schools either. Man, for some reason, uh, it, 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 was hard. it was hard for us to find a game. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and – and but you know with our new uh, with our new AD, you know of course all the city schools you know have to play each other this year. So 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 that was, that was two games out the way, and and I tried to find some more games around here, you know, with some of the local county schools, and they won't play. Didn't want anything so, to do with Central. So so that's why I had to kind of venture off into um, you know Birmingham, but but I do hate I, I missed here, Chris this year. Yeah, yeah, that's but, a game. Uh, but, that, uh, uh, you know, yeah, and the coach said he would, he would have played me if, if, if we would have called. But I just, you know, I just I just missed out on that. Well, maybe you can get them back on in the schedule in, in, in the future. How many how many players do you expect to have out this afternoon, Coach? Uh, we hope to have at least about 45. Okay. About 45, and then we'll, we'll get a couple more next week for school start. And then because we, we, we didn't have a constant – uh, workouts, uh, you know, we worked out from from uh, six a.m. Uh, until eleven and until eleven each day. But we gave them uh, we gave them a lunch. I mean, we gave them a breakfast break, and we also took them to lunch each day, man. So 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 we had a great eight weeks of summer workout this summer. I want to ask you about something I know is is near and dear to your heart. Of course, as a former player, and you went on to Jackson State, where you were an all SWAC linebacker there at the college level. I uh, coached, uh, you know, started your coaching career, made the decision to come back here. Attendance in the last few years just has not been what I know you would like it to be, what I would like it to be, what we're accustomed to seeing there at Falcon Field. I know you're working hard to reach out to the community. How are you addressing that? And it's not just Central. It seems like a lot of places high school football attendance has, has fallen off. You know, of course, we have a Friday night college game now on TV. There's so much to do, but – uh, talk about trying to get the fans back out there to Falcon Field and, and make it a happening on Friday night. What are you doing to try to increase the interest in the community? Uh, well, you know, one thing, um, just, just just trying to get the brand out there. You know, Central is def- definitely a brand for the city of Tuscaloosa. Uh, we have a lot of great leaders. 
that have uh, came from Central and just continue to, um, you know, get the brand out there and, 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 and let folks know when we play, what time we play, where we play. And, um, um, you know, just continue to get that name out there. While I've got you, speaking of great players that came from Central, there's one right now at the University of Alabama. I want to get your thoughts on Lester Cotton. It seems like this year he's in the mix to play on that offensive line. You coached him in high school. You know what kind of young man he is. Uh, what do you think about his potential there with Nick Saban in the Crimson Tide? Oh, man, he's he going to have, he have a great career there. I talked to him on yesterday. It was yesterday was Sunday, and um, – and I said, you know, I asked him, I said, boy, you sound tired. He's a coach, man. I, I just got done working out. So I'm, I'm really I'm really looking for him having a, a great great career at the University of Alabama. Guard or tackle, what do you think is his best position at the, at the college level? Do you have a thought on that? Well, he, he told me he'll probably start at left guard uh, this coming up year. Good and, deal. And the, great, and the great thing about that, uh, you know, I know he had the University of Alabama, but we, we will have a total of 20, 20 kids playing college football this, this upcoming year. Wow, I didn't realize it was that high, Coach. It's still a yeah. talent pipeline over there with, with the Falcons. Hey, the, the rezoning that went on, we mainly think of it in terms of Northridge and Bryant, but was Central affected at all in that? No, we, we weren't affected uh, at all. Uh, we didn't lose any kids, nor, nor did we gain any kids. So, uh so it, it it didn't affect us one way. Uh, we kind of we we we, we kind of almost you know we, we kind of stayed the same. Okay, so you pretty much got your your team back intact. I want to ask you about right. the schedule. Um, this is the second year in a row they've done this where they've moved it up a week, and you can either play that first week August the nineteenth and have a bye during the season, or you could play on the twenty sixth and play straight through. Or you could do what Hillcrest did last year, which was play on the, the first week and then play 10 games and have a bye week going into the playoffs if you make the playoffs. If not, your season would end a week early. Uh, how do you like that? Do you like having 11 weeks to play 10? I do. And, 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 and because, you know, this year I chose to uh, have a bye week. Yeah, because you got to buy October 7th, right? Yeah, yeah mid season, you know, I see my kids, uh, the coaches are tired, the kids are tired, and. And that week, and, you know, we maybe practice about three days, and and you know, kind of rejuvenate. And uh, you know, you know, I like the option of, of of having an option. Well, you're going to find out a lot about your football team right off the bat because Friday yeah. night, August the nineteenth, you you host Bessemer City. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, they're a bigger school. We've talked about your willingness to play bigger people and your and your issue trying to find games from some of the schools right here. But I know that. Uh, you know, obviously they're not a region opponent, but but your thoughts on opening up against such a strong team? Well, you know, I, I didn't want to, but you know, sometimes you have to do do what you got to do, especially when uh, when it's hard for you to find games. And you know, I asked all the schools, I asked all the schools around here. You know, besides, you know, I, um, I at the time I'd had a coach from Hillcrest number, and because you know, I, I look at it as revenue that stay here in Tuscaloosa. And also, it cut down on our travel. And uh, you know, I kind of, you know, I kind of look at when I'm scheduling games like this. You know, first I look at the business aspect of it, and then I looked at it, look at it as the um, uh, the financial aspect of it, and you know, just just keeping money here in Tuscaloosa. Well, the good thing about that, it's a home game. Bessemer City should bring a lot of fans. Should be a lot of excitement right. on the central side and. And as we said, you don't get Hillcrest, but man, you got a big home game the twenty third against Bryant. You go to right. Northridge on the on the twenty seventh. Those are going to be huge games for the fans and for uh, you and and the schools in terms of revenue. So it should be a heck of a season. Three forty five practice this afternoon. We'll have a crew out there from the TV station. Appreciate the time, Coach. Yeah, hey, thank you all for having us on.